Hi, I'm John Narrell, and welcome to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast. If you're feeling stuck in your career and overwhelmed by what steps to take, I can help you. As an executive and career transition coach, I help my clients prepare, position, and promote who they are and what they do to show up and find a job they love or love the job they have. It's time to start building your mid-career GPS. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. It is great to be back with you for another episode. Now, today we are talking about gratitude. And this episode is going to have some of the feels in it. And it's important we do this because you have a choice. You can either be bitter about your career, or you can be grateful for it. And being grateful for your career is something that is going to elevate the way you show up each and every day to do the work you are called to do. Now, I want to thank you for listening to this podcast, first and foremost. And whether this is your first time here or you've been here before, I'm thankful because when I decided to launch this podcast, it was really out of a place for me to serve and to come from this place where I could give you valuable information to help you navigate what's going on in your career, especially for those of you who are mid-career professionals. And the comments and the reviews and the ratings and the shares that have happened are wonderful. They warm my heart. And so this kind of professional development to help you get where you want to be and make the kind of connections and contributions and impact you want to make is why I'm here. And it's why I appreciate you being along for the ride with me. I want to give a huge shout out to my best friend from high school, Robert Rinkowich. He posted a really nice review on my, on Apple podcast for me. And he said, excellent podcast filled with valuable career information. John is easy to listen to and has great advice. And that's coming from someone who has known me for over, gosh, almost 35 years, if that more than 35 years. So Rob, huge shout out and thank you for that. Also, I want to let you know that I've got a brand new resource for you that is available on my website. I want you to check out. It is called the 55-Minute Career Transition Jumpstart. It's a download. You're going to put in your email address. You can get into my email community as well. But if you are stuck and struggling with how to navigate toward whatever is next in your career, I want you to give yourself 55 minutes. Download this guide. Go through the exercise that are in the, in the guide. They are time. They are time for a reason so that in less than an hour, you are going to feel incredibly productive about taking some action steps toward your career. And you might just thank me for it. So let's talk about gratitude. I grew up in a household where my parents instilled this whole idea about the importance of saying thank you. I don't know if you were like me or not, but when I was growing up, if I got a gift from somebody, I was not allowed to play with that toy or anything until I wrote them a handwritten thank you note. I like handwritten thank you notes. Admittedly, I don't do it as much anymore as I should, but there is something special about getting a handwritten note or even a really nice email with a nice thank you message in it. Maybe a little gif or something like that there too. Gratitude is an expression of our thanks. And in our careers, we are thankful for having an opportunity to work somewhere, but it's also an even exchange. We do the work and we get paid for doing it. Now, one thing I have never shared with you until now on this podcast episode is my career walk. I have said it's been messy. Here's where it's gotten really messy. So here goes. My first job I ever had was mowing lawns. I had like the typical 
young kid's job where I was mowing a few lawns in the neighborhood and I got paid for it. At 14 years old, I was the church organist for my local parish, which meant my Saturday afternoons were spent playing at a nine o'clock funeral, 11 o'clock funeral, one o'clock wedding, three o'clock wedding, five o'clock mass, usually a mass or two on Sunday. And I would play the organ for the congregation. And it was, to me, it was the best job a 14-year-old could have. I could walk to the church. I didn't have to drive. And I got paid pretty well for doing it. So I started making money as a paid musician. Now, I also worked at Wawa, which is a, a great convenience store chain here in the Northeast. And I used to spend my summers in college working at a local Wawa. I used to work the morning rush hour shift, right? So I'd work from six to two or six to three. And you would see those same customers come in every day and they would get their buttered roll or their bagel and their coffee. And whether I was working the deli counter or I was working the register, I got to see those same people over and over again. It was as if I got to be part of their regular day and vice versa. It was funny. My manager would say to me too, she's like, well, everybody knows when you go back to school because you're not here and they, they ask me how you're doing and they miss you. And so I would come back and I would work maybe during um, like a week or so during holiday break and then come back in the, in the springtime, in the summer. I used to tell people to call out sick so I could get overtime. Overtime for me was fascinating. I love the fact that I could get paid time and a half. And then if I worked on Sunday and I led the shift, I got a little extra um, more than that. I think it was like 50 cents more an hour or something. But as a kid, you want to make as much money as possible. I love that whole customer service job. I put up party tents you know, for a party rental company. My dad swore I would not make it past five days in that job. I made it to six just to spite him. And when I went into my boss and told him that I was going to quit and I was very happy to give him two weeks notice, he let me go immediately on the spot because I was awful at that job. And I was very grateful for that. That was nice. My first teaching job was I taught religion in an all-girls Catholic high school. After that job, I was a temp employee and I did administrative assistant type services for the county health department, or an engineering firm. And then I also took a job as a consultant. It was my first consulting job. And I did that within the bowling industry for, at the time, the junior branch, which was the Young American Bowling Alliance with a program called In School Bowling, where we brought bowling programs to physical education classes. And now the um, Young American Bowling Alliance is all, of course, umbrellaed under the United States Bowling Congress. And I worked as a bowling center employee, and I got to learn the ins and outs of the, the job from the front desk and what it meant to work in a, uh, in a bowling center. And then I went back to go work as a church organist, but this time I, I directed a choir. And I had 17 people in my choir. I played piano, directed, and sang. I had uh, a retired Maryland State Trooper who played stand-up bass. I had a woman in, in, the, in the group who played the violin. I had two guitarists. They were awesome. And I loved it because I got chance to not only build a choir, but I got chance to build a team. And I did it right when Sister Act came out. So it was even more fun to be able to do that stuff. And I went back to graduate school, got my master's in teaching and a minor in mathematics so I could teach math. And then I took a job as a middle school mathematics teacher that eventually became middle school mathematics teacher and building coordinator. And then it was middle school mathematics teacher and district coordinator. And I was doing consulting work as well for Casio in their educational uh, division in, in calculators and working with writing curriculum for them and doing trainings for them at conferences and workshops for teachers. and. All during this time, I took my passion for bowling 
And I started bowling more tournaments and I got my membership into the Professional Bowlers Association and I started winning money and events as well. And while it was never a huge part of my income, it definitely allowed me to go bowl and make money doing it so I could go bowl more tournaments and buy more equipment and things like that. And I'm so grateful for the relationships that I've built, especially within the bowling industry, but also everywhere else I've worked. But here's where it keeps going because we're not done yet with all these jobs. I worked as an instructional coach. I managed an instructional coaching program for DC public schools. I was one of the managers there. I went to go work as an assessment specialist for the state superintendent of education. And then from there, I went to go work for an educational nonprofit where I wrote math items for students across the country for their large scale summative assessments. And then from that promoted or graduated or evolved into a role as a training and staffing director where I started doing more coaching, but specifically with a corporate and career lens. And when I wanted to bring an internal coaching program to that organization, and that was not part of the business plan, I made a conscious decision to leave. And to leave because I had an opportunity to go this entrepreneurial route to launch a business where I get to help mid-career professionals each and every day prepare, position, and promote who they are and what they do so they can show up to find a job they love or love the job they have. I've already written one book under my coaching business. I'm getting ready to release book number two. But the other thing was I had written seven books prior to this. Um, I wrote a study guide for Barron's for the New Jersey grade seven math test. We did a couple versions of that. I wrote more than a handful of books for Casio in terms of their um, internal curriculum packages that they were doing. I have delivered keynotes to numerous conferences, um, a couple times to the National Council of Supervisors of Mathematics. And now I'm a podcast host. Who would have thought when I started my career that I would have this podcast platform and I would be sharing information with everybody? But this is how our careers evolve. And when our careers evolve and they take off or they get detoured or we get stuck in traffic or we have to take an alternate route or we get on that highway and we go 65 miles an hour, 75 if that's the speed limit where you are, and we're just moving forward and we're going and we're going and we're going and we're going, we can lose sight of where and why we need to be grateful for all of these experiences. I will be the first one to say to you that I have worked with some amazing leaders and colleagues and professionals who are at the top of their game and their top of their craft, and they have shaped me and molded me into the person I am today in part because of their leadership and their guidance. And at the same time, I am as grateful for the people who were not for the people who, in my opinion, fell short as leaders or who didn't care as much or who didn't invest their effort and their time in partnering with me on my development. For whatever those reasons are, I am as grateful to them because they have helped me define who I don't want to be so I can be the person and leader I am. What we have seen over this past year plus, as we have already eclipsed the one-year anniversary of COVID being uh, identified as a pandemic with the World Health Organization and our country going into lockdown and shutting things down, we have seen a tremendous amount of hardship and loss when it has come to unemployment and small businesses and large businesses having to close their doors, people being out of work, food insecurities. And we have this ritual at home where whenever we go to the supermarket and we come home and we put 
food in our fridge, we give thanks because we, we feel for those people who are hungry, who don't have the same kind of resources. And it's those little moments where we pause to be grateful that humbles us and allows us to really sit with the gratitude that needs to be had, to be given, to be thankful for, and to progress into whatever is next. I'm also a huge fan of Susie Orman. She's the financial expert and and guru. You may have remembered her show on CNBC. One of the things I loved about Susie Orman was that she used to do these, and I think she still does them, but these PBS specials where she would talk for, it would be like a two-hour block, and then in the middle of the presentation, PBS would come on to do their annual giving campaign or subscriber campaign. And one of the things Susie talked about, and I am going to date myself here because we are going to go back to a reference here about paper checks, was that she encouraged her her listeners, her audience members, to write the word thank you in the memo line of a check. It's that line in the lower left-hand corner where you'd write yourself a note about what the check was. And at that time, I had just purchased my second house, sold the first house, did well enough to go buy this second house, which cut my commute from basically an hour down to 10 minutes. I lived so close to the school, but I was far enough away. Like I could run home at lunch if I needed to and come back. And I bought this house at the height of the housing market in 2006. And and I remember walking through the house. It was a two-bedroom uh, townhouse with two and a half baths and it had this really nice loft and it had a one car garage. And I felt like in some ways I had kind of made it in that I was able to buy this house, but it, but it was a stretch. And I remember having to write that mortgage payment the first time. And there almost being a lump in my throat that I was going to write a check for this much money that was really at the top of my budget, but I knew I could afford it. And I remember taking the pen and writing the word, thank you, in the memo line. And I wrote those words for the next four years I owned that house. And I wrote those words, thank you, because I was giving thanks for having the financial resources, the job, the work ethic to make that bill every single month. Now, at that time, I was working a full-time teaching job. I was consulting part-time. I had a tutoring business where I was seeing anywhere between 10 and 14 students a week after school. I was bowling competitively out on tour. Anybody that was willing to pay me money for something um, work-wise, I was going to go ahead and do. I never said no to a job in probably about eight years. And every time I wrote that check, I wrote, thank you. Because in order for us to come from this place of gratitude, and as you think about where you are in your career and you think about your financial situation, you think about your life, there is a mindset shift that happens where you consciously choose whether you want to be bitter or you want to be grateful. And that mindset happens because it is based on circumstances and experiences. If you have gotten fired, yeah, I got fired. I got fired from one of the first jobs I ever had. Or if you got passed up for a promotion, I did. And 
when opportunities were not given to me or I was not selected for those opportunities, those things can all shape our GPS and take us down a dark and difficult road. It is a detour we don't expect to take, but when again do we ever plan to take a detour? And going down that road and and traveling on that, you are making decisions, you are having reactions, and you make a choice as to whether it is going to make you stronger or is going to beat you down. Those experiences, those circumstances that happen, they are just that. My coach training teaches me that those circumstances, it is all because of the energetic lens we choose to put on those situations. Whether I choose to believe I am the victim or I am going to fight my way through it or I'm gonna rationalize it or I'm going to take care of somebody else in this whole process because they don't want to fire me, but I'm like, oh, it's okay. It'll be all right. Or it's the opportunity. Or it is me having the vision to thrive in those kind of situations. And for me, gratitude has been the place where it has grounded me as an employee, as a leader, as a business owner. There are benefits for being grateful. You can Google any of these things and find out that we're coming from a place of gratitude, improves your health, strengthens your outlook, freshens your perspective, and you have this mindset that you are able to come from. I will share with you that I am not someone who writes in his gratitude journal every day, but I do make it a point to pause several times throughout the day to give thanks. As an entrepreneur, you tend to ride the waves of when business is really great and when it's not, when you are closing a lot of contracts and when there's been a few weeks or months when you haven't. I have learned to be grateful through all of those things because of what I have experienced in my life that I know the way I want to show up from a place of gratitude is what warms my heart. I don't want to go through this world with a cold heart. I want it warmed in order for me to come from that place of service and value I talk about with you all the time. I am also someone who is not going to pull out the proverbial guitar or the tambourine and sing kumbaya and throw glitter up in the air and make sure that everything is all great and rosy, especially when it's not. Part of showing up is owning where you are. And right now, for some of you, it's not an easy time. Maybe you're Thankful you have a job, but you're really frustrated that you haven't gotten in a raise in two years because of the pandemic, or you're still working at 80% capacity, even though, or sorry, 80% of your um, compensation, even though you are working at 100% capacity. Being grateful is a choice. And it is a choice that is increased because of your awareness. As someone who used to manage a team, I always looked for opportunities to recognize my employees, my coworkers, and my fellow leaders. And one of the easiest things I found to do was to say thank you and mean it. Now, I'll put a link to a blog post in there that I want you to check out in the show notes, but here's what I mean by saying thank you and meaning it. You know the people in your life and in your career who have looked at you and said thank you and you felt like they didn't mean it. Or they went to some training and they were told, you should say thank you more often. And so they come by your office and they're like, hey, you know, I know you work late, thanks. And you're like, what the heck? Saying thank you and mean it is done this way. 
I want to thank you because. And you have a very specific reason for thanking someone. I want to thank you because I know you worked over the last few weekends, and I'm sure that took time away from things you wanted to do or perhaps time with your family. I appreciate that. And let's talk about a way maybe for you to get some of that time back. I want to thank you for dealing with that client who was really unhappy on the project. And I know it wasn't easy, but I appreciate your skill set in managing client relationships. And I want you to know you're really good at it. And I appreciate everything you're doing. Saying thank you needs to have a reason behind it. And when we include that reason, that's where we tag the meaning. Gratitude is like a muscle. We need to exercise it on a regular basis so we can come from that place of gratitude and service. When you think about how you express your gratitude, I invite you to try different ways of what that looks like, how you communicate that verbally, how you communicate that non-verbally, how you write it, whether it be in a handwritten note or in an email. Or you actually take time to pick up the phone and call somebody. You will find the ways that expressing gratitude is most meaningful for you. There is no right way to do it except to say thank you and mean it. To take that pause and be thankful for what you have and where you are. When I work with my clients, we talk about where they are in our coaching relationship because of the totality of their experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and why they need to be grateful for all of them. What have they learned from those experiences that are getting them where they are right now? That's huge. Small steps baby steps one step at a time. But the goal for today and the challenge, if you will, is to find someone you work with and thank them and mean it. Tell them why you're specifically thanking them and to take a few seconds to just pause for yourself and think about why you are grateful for where you are in your career right now whether you are at the best point in your career you have ever had and you are making boatloads of money and just moving and shaking within your organization or your business, or you are currently unemployed and frustrated that you have not found a job yet. I invite you to find a way to be grateful because it will power you through to whatever is next. All right. Thank you for spending this half hour with me. I sincerely appreciate it. I hope you got some really great things about this and can move your gratitude practice in whatever way forward. And don't forget to check out my website for that new jumpstart guide, the 55 minute career transition jumpstart. Just go to my website at johnnarrell.com and download that. I hope that helps you as well. All right. Stay tuned. I've got a great guest coming up on Friday's episode. So it's another special bonus episode I don't want you to miss. So make sure to check that out. In the meantime, make it a great rest of the day and continue to start building your GPS one mile at a time. Take care. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to miss an episode, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you usually listen. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you would leave me a rating and review to let me know what you think to help others find this podcast and continue to bring you relevant and useful content to help you navigate what's next for your career. And if you're ready to create your mid-career GPS and get rid of the overwhelm so you can find the job you'll love or love the job you have, visit my website at johnnarrell.com for more information about joining my private Facebook group and scheduling a free consult with me so we can start building your mid-career GPS together. 
Don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Narrow Coaching. I'll see you next time.